I gotta get new tyres for this car, but it begs the question, do I need special tyres for an electric car or are regular tyres okay? Today, I'm gonna to answer all those questions and more, so jump on in because it's time to get this car some new kicks. This is it, time for new tyres. This is Mark, the Tesla Tow Bar King and part-time supermodel. What do we do first? Well, let's have a look and see what your tyres are like. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good point, okay. Normally the left rear is the worst. Oh yeah, why is that? The camera on the road causes it to wear a bit more. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not too bad, but the inside edge is starting to go. Oh yeah? Uh, I've seen worse. Okay. I can show you worse. Oh yeah? Yep, you feel the inside edge. Yeah, yeah. It's not too bad, but it's getting there. I know how it feels. The back are worse than the front, but that's pretty typical. Right. So they're not they're not completely bald. They're not you know like Patrick Stewart, but they are on the way. They're kind of like halfway to Yul Brynner. Yeah. Let's have yeah. a let's have a look at some bad ones, eh? That was an old reference. Here's yeah, a typical <laughs> Tesla tire. Lost over that, didn't they? <laughs> where the edge, this is obviously very bad. Yeah. This is how we normally see them, where it start, it's about to go through. This is very typical. This one. And then some of them, people just don't replace them until they blow up. Oh, far out. There's someone that ended up on the side of the road with a Tesla loaner. But down here, that is good value for money. It's gone a little bit too far, but at least it's nice and even. I see, okay. So because they were running 44 rather than 42, it's worn out pretty evenly and they've so got a good alignment. Is that a Tesla top tip? Run your tyres at 44 PSI, give them more life. That's the Tesla top tip. Already we're saving money. And while these guys are busy jacking up, <laughs> So Mark's busy jacking right now. What I want to point out is that all the electricity used in today's video is from Ecotricity. That's right, this entire workshop is running off Ecotricity Electricity, which is New Zealand's only Toitu certified climate positive electricity provider. You're laughing all the way to the bank and you're not killing your kids in the process. What's there not to like? Unless, unless you don't like your kids, of course. So we've got some EV tyres here. First question I want to ask is, can you use any old tyre or do you, should you buy specific EV tyres for your EV? The EV tyres do have a lower rolling resistance, so therefore you will go further. As long as you get the right weight rating for your car, you don't have to have an EV tyre. Oh, okay. But they are better. In terms of the economy, in terms of the way the tyre is constructed, they are built differently. An EV tyre has a, a stiffer sidewall. This one here is an EV tyre. If you, you can tell if you just push on the sidewall versus a non-EV tyre. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's so much firmer. And so what happens is when they make the tyre, they, they crisscross the... The, they use something strong. I yeah. don't know, I don't make tyres, but <laughs> they make it strong. So what happens is under acceleration, there's a lot of force on the tyre, yep. a lot of twist, especially in an EV because of the instant torque. So what happens with a tyre like this is they can stretch. So the EV tyre is made to be stronger. Okay. So that's my main reason to tell people to buy an EV tyre. They're not necessarily more expensive. The ones you're getting today, 250 bucks. You know, the Hankook is $580, but some have foam, some doesn't. So a lot of people will ask about the foam. The foam will make it about one or two decibels quieter. I so have it's so never minimal. seen foam in a tyre before. It's so minimal. So this is definitely an EV tyre. It's got foam in it's it got to reduce noise. It. Yep, and they call it sound absorber. So your recommendation, EV tyres are worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yep. What about the tyres that's going on the Model 3? Tell me about these. What makes these special? So this is the Zeta Atoria. They're good value. I do buy a lot of these. They've been become really popular. So a lot of tyres will have a little sticker like this. So this is telling you that it's a B rating in the wet. And here's your economy. Look, there's a little fuel pump. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is, a B, uh, this is an A. So you're going to go further. Yes! And then this one has a decibel rating, 71 dB. Okay. Is that good? Uh, pretty good. These are probably... One or two dB louder than the factory tyre. You can't really hear it till it's about three dB difference. Okay. So yes, they are louder, but you'd have to measure it with a measuring tool rather than your ears aren't good enough to I measure see. the difference. Okay. So this is a trade-off. I see. If you're paying got... 250 bucks instead of 500 bucks, there's going to be a trade-off. So this is sort of average. Yeah, yeah. average. You're average. <laughs> so that'd suit you really well. That's what my ex tells me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the tyre off the car, and looking at it, it doesn't seem that bad. At least here it looks okay, but here it's bald. You reckon a couple more PSI, a bit more pressure, and this even would have been much where I'd get much more use out of this tyre. You probably got to go, could have got another seven, <laughs> seven and ten thousand more Ks. Really? So a lot. Far by out. running a few more pressure through the life of the tyre from the start. Yeah. It won't really come up on camera, but there is a lump there where it is going to rip there and you're going to start to see canvas. Yep. And you can't really see that when you look at the tyre from the outside. because no, this is on the inside of the car. When you look at this, they look in and they go, oh, I've got plenty of tread. They need to get under the back of the car and look at this inside edge. Okay. For yeah. comparison, obviously, this looks fantastic. Brand new shiny tyre. It's got that new tyre smell. Okay, so what happens to the old tyre, though? Does it just go to landfill like people on Facebook tell me? 
No. So what <laughs> happens with the tyre is the government set up a scheme, uh, and it's run by a company called Tirewise. And what happens with that scheme is when the importer imports a tyre into the country, they have to pay a fee. Then when I buy the tyre off that company, I have to pay a fee. When I sell that tyre to you, you pay the fee. Right. The typical fee depends on the size of the tyre. It is based on the tyre size. So a typical tyre like this sort of thing, $6.95 a tyre is your normal sort of tyre-wise fee, somewhere around that. So if someone's charging you $15 and it's not a big SUV tyre, question that because they're not supposed to. The tyres will then sit in a pile out here and then once a month the tyre guy comes and collects them off me. He loads up the tyres, they take them away, they get paid by that scheme per tyre that they, that they hand in. Uh, you can go to tyrewires.co.nz and that shows you what happens to the tyres. Um, but there's a lot of recycling going on, they turn them into kids' playgrounds, part of the asphalt in the road, it's probably why we're getting so many potholes, there's too much rubber, <laughs> too much rubber in them. Um, so all sorts of things get made, and there's actually grants available now, if you can make something out of rubber, they'll actually fund, fund your project. Now these tyres that we're going on, these are what brand? Rene Artois? <laughs> these are the Zeta Astoria EV. Okay, right. Now these tyres, are they... Uh, scared to ask this question, but... Are these suitable for my driving, which I do a lot of highway driving? They're black and they're round. So I realise that you was know, a daft question. <laughs> they'll do highway driving, city driving, whatever. They are more efficient on the open road than around town because you're not stopping and starting and stopping right. and starting. We're now onto the passenger side. This is a good time, Mark, to talk about money. Now, these tyres are 250 bucks each that we're going to be putting on the car. Yep. Is that a good price? What's the price range customers should be looking at? Pretty much anywhere from a couple of hundred bucks to $800. That's probably at the lower end of the price cost for a tyre of this size. Yep. They're quite a big tyre, the 235-45-19. Uh, so this has got the sport wheels. So they are a bigger tyre. So they are bigger tyres and more expensive. Now Mark, I've heard that the Tesla Model Y wears out tyres faster than the Model 3. Is that true? Yes it is. Oh, yes. Uh, why? The Y is a little bit heavier. Okay. People tend to tow. People put lots more weight in them. And so when you put weight in a car, it makes the tyres go negative. And as you accelerate, whenever you accelerate, the tyres are going negative, they're twisting like that. So it's putting a lot of force on the inside edge of the tyre. Hence that earlier where we said you put a few more PSI in there to help with that. The left rear, as you can see, is a lot more worn on that edge oh, than this yeah, one. Oh yeah, look at that. This is very common, and that's just due to the camber on the road. The tyre's working a little bit harder on that inside edge because the road's slightly curved. Okay. So that tyre's got to work a little bit harder than the other tyre. So, in the Tesla, both the 3 and the Y, they're both the same setup with the suspension. There's no adjustment for the camber on this arm. It's a fixed arm that uh -huh. sets the camber. We have no concentric bolt here or here, yep. so we can't adjust the angle of the wheel, which right. is the camber. So because we can't adjust that, all we can adjust is the toe this way. Yep. And as you adjust the toe, it does affect the camber. Yeah. Um, we've had one customer who was having this problem wearing out tyres all the time. We've put an adjustable arm in here, which oh, really? you can adjust it straight. So the factory spec uh, is about one degree negative. He's now running zero and his tyres are going to last 70, 80,000 K because of that. Let's talk tyre repair kits. All cars now seem to have tyre repair kits instead of spare tyres. And they come with a can of goo and a pump. Is that really OK to use or does it become a headache for tyrologists like yourself? It is a headache because the, the, the gunk gets all caught in the foam and you can't get it out. Uh -huh. So if it's a non-foam tyre or a non-sound absorber tyre, it's not as bad, but it's hard to clean out. So that's okay. why a lot of places don't like it and say, oh, you've got to buy a new tyre. But it's okay, overall it's, it's okay. It's okay overall. Do you use it or do you I prefer use, a spare tyre? I use, I use what they call a string repair, which is a temporary, very much a temporary repair to get me to the tyre shop. Have you never thought about putting a spare tyre in your car instead? I have carried a spare. I, in fact, when I do my trips around the country, I, with a trailer on the back, I have a spare on the trailer that does the trailer and the car. It's big. You put one of these in your boot, and it uses up most of your boot. Right. That's why most people don't carry a spare. I want to ask Mark's professional opinion on my own homemade tyre repair kit. Mark, how bad is this? What do we got here, Gary? <laughs> bit of everything. Okay, oh, some, some ham whites, I need those. You can open that up. Yeah, oh, okay, good. Here we go. So I just threw this together from bits and pieces. Yeah. How bad is it's, it? It's right you. Oh, you've got a string, you've got, you've got what they call the tyre bacon. Oh yeah? So this is the stuff I was talking about. Okay. Tyre bacon. So that, you, you find where your nail is, you pull your nail out, you get this device and you stab it and yep. clean it out with that. You put a piece of tyre bacon through that hole yep. so it folds over and you stab it into your tyre, you pull that out and you leave it in there. I also bought these little things off the internet. 
Have you seen those before? Oh, what are those? Little, cl <laughs> little plug screw in. I haven't yeah. seen them, but I've, I've seen them in tyres. But yeah, you can screw that in where the nail was, and it'll get you to the tyre shop. Ever used, have you ever seen anyone use these I've, before? I've never used those, but I have used the bacon. I have the same thing as you've got, Gavin. A cheap little, oh, it comes with gloves. Oh, eh? look at that. But as you can see, it doesn't get used. No. <laughs> but it has all the same things. Oh, brilliant. Essentially, it's got the same thing and the same thing and a whole lot of bacon. Oh, so my cheapo tyre kit that I put together myself, it gets a pass. Yes. Yes. Okay, we're all done. So, total recap, how much have we spent today? Well, how yep. much have I spent today? You've spent uh, quarter to one. Quarter to one, that's 12.45? 12.45. Okay, all right, you can see what's been done in the corner of the screen there. Next thing, EV tyres versus non-EV tyres. Are EV tyres worth it? I'm a fan, yeah. Okay, cool. The average Kiwi, how much should they expect to get from their tyres on an EV? I'd say 45 to 55,000. Is your phone. <laughs> how much should you expect to pay for a decent set of tyres? Anywhere from two to 800 for this size tyre. Okay. Tire life, how do you extend it? Run a few more PSI, mm -hmm. you'll go a long way. And regular rotation? About every 10,000 K, you want to rotate front to rear. Brilliant. All right, I'm happy. I'm a tight wad. I'm part Dutch, and my tight wad gland is satisfied. So, time to go put a few more thousand climate positive kilometers on this car.